After two frenzied years, it might seem as though the quick commerce bubble has popped, with several companies folding up, sacking staff or being acquired. But a handful are still tackling the market. Can they ever be profitable? And if so, how? I'm Varsha Meghani and you're watching Nuts and Bolts by Forbes India. Commerce startups offer customers the option to do their shopping at the touch of an app, with orders arriving in just 10 minutes or so. The items are stocked in dark stores or mini warehouses scattered across cities and are delivered by a fleet of riders. 2021 saw a flurry of such startups raise millions in investment. Zepto, founded by two 19 year old Stanford dropouts, emerged as the poster boy of quick commerce, racing to a near unicorn valuation in less than a year of its launch. Grofers rebranded to Blinkit to convey speed. Ola launched Ola Dash. And Swiggy decided to set aside its entire $700 million fundraise at the time for Instamart, its speedy delivery service. Even biggies like Tata owned Big Basket and Reliance came up to speed with the launch of BB Now and Geomart Express, respectively. But today, the market looks very different. Commerce saw a wave of consolidation in 2022 as the bigger players gobbled up the smaller competition. Blinkit was bought over by Zomato. Dunzo sold a 25.8% stake to Reliance and Ola Dash folded up. Come 2023 and there are more casualties. Reliance, which swims in pools of cash, decided to shut down Geomart Express. But a handful of players are still fighting on. Zepto, still flush with cash from it, the funds it raised in 2021 and 22, and Instamart and Blinkit aren't rolling over anytime soon. Neither is BB now. In fact, they believe the demand for their services is only set to grow. After all, in 2021, India ordered $5.5 billion worth of groceries online. 13% of this is attributed to quick commerce platforms. Red Sea, a consultancy, says that the quick commerce market will boom from $300 million at present to $5.5 billion by 2025. Yet Zomato, in its latest financial results, announced that its platform business, that is food delivery not including quick commerce, had reached break even. Losses are piling up for the others too. Zepto posted 140 crore rupees in revenue on a loss of 390 crore rupees in FY22. Dunzo posted 68 crore rupees in revenue on a loss of 464 crore rupees in FY22. So the question is, can quick commerce ever make money? And if so, how? In theory, yes. Think of it this way. Fundamentally, the unit of any quick commerce business is the dark store. If companies can ensure that their dark stores are generating cash, that is enough to cover their fixed costs like rent, as well as variable costs like delivery and fleet expenses, they can make the economics work. But that's not easy to crack, which is why companies are struggling. Quick commerce companies can recover their costs by focusing on three levers right order value, right population density around dark stores, and monetization through ads. Zepto claims to have an average order value of 400 rupees. Blinkits is 553 rupees, while Instamarts is reportedly 400 rupees. It's a no-brainer that higher the average order value, higher the commission earned by the quick commerce company. But there's a nuance there, which is what kind of products is the customer ordering? Fresh fruits and vegetables, for example, fetch higher margins of 18 to 40 percent compared to standard FMCG products that fetch margins of 4 to 15 percent. So, say a customer orders 1000 rupees worth of Safola oil. The margins on a product like that are 3 to 4 percent. So, the quick commerce company earns about 30 to 40 rupees on that order. On the other hand, if a customer orders just 300 rupees worth of fruits where the margins are 35 to 38 percent, the company earns anywhere between 105 to 115 rupees. That means it's not so much about average order values as it is about the margin one earns off of them. Moreover, a better assortment of products will help attract more customers. More customers means more revenue, and more revenue can be invested back into the business to achieve better product assortment and even enter newer categories. Zepto and Instamart, for example, are piloting a cafe business that will offer customers coffee, tea and snacks through the dark store model.
A dark stock cannot promise 10 to 15 minute deliveries if it is serving a large radius. So the catchment it serves needs to have enough density in terms of people valuing quick deliveries and willing to pay for them. Instamart, for example, which is present in 29 cities across India, ranks metros, including Mumbai, Bengaluru and Kolkata, as its top five cities. Sales are largely skewed towards metros as it is a factor of the size of the population. Besides the usual levy of packaging and food delivery charges, quick commerce companies have found a meaningful source of revenue in advertising income. Large and emerging brands who want to reach their target audiences in faster and more effective ways have been partnering with quick commerce companies. That's because quick commerce companies have a platform and a captive audience on that platform. Brands use that platform to build awareness and push sales of their products. They can micro-target relevant audiences, understand consumption patterns in neighborhoods, and get real-time visibility on the effectiveness of their ads, something that TV, print, and social media ads don't allow for. All of this helps to achieve a better return on their investment. Blinkit, which says it has partnered with 500 brands, launched a self-serve advertising platform in, Dece in December last year. The platform allows brands to bid on their search keywords of interest, as well as create customized brand stores on the platform. The fact that Blinkit's contribution margin has improved from minus 7.3% in Q2 FY23 to minus 4.5% in Q3 FY23 is testimony to the fact that they're doing something right. It takes rigour and discipline across the supply chain to win at the quick commerce business. According to Adit Palicha, co-founder and CEO of Zepto, from the sourcing efficiency that we drive on the back end, to optimising freight costs between the back end hubs to the front end dark stores, to driving IP and manpower productivity within the dark store itself, to waste management and the depth of supply forecasting such that you know how much inventory you need per day, per store, it's a very granular business. So it boils down to execution. If rapid delivery apps can ace that, they'll be able to deliver to customers as well as investors.